I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. What's going on, Colts Nation? I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is my guy, Bam, Bam, right there, Donald Thomas. And look, yes, we you know the Indianapolis Colts made a 13 nothing comeback, or yeah, 13 to nothing comeback without their number one wide receiver and Michael Pittman Jr. After that nasty he took, nasty hit he took in the second quarter uh, from Kazi. Without Zach Moss, he had a bunch of running backs that we had no idea who in the heck they were. You know, guys off the practice squad, people we picked up, wide receivers come in that was on the practice squad, you know, just a week earlier. They come in, they play. Shane Steichen's like, I got this. I got this. We're going to go on a 30 nothing run. All right, we're going to beat these Steelers. All right, that, that's just unreal, unreal. We all seen it. We've all heard it. So much stuff talked about that game already. I think we're going to put that game in the past a little bit. All right, because I would like to move to the future. Right now, the Indianapolis Colts still sitting in the playoffs, playoff seating have been for the last now three weeks in a row. No one really thought that they would make the playoffs. You know, starting the season, they are in the thick of it. Three-way tie for the divisional title with the Jaguars, the Texans, and the Colts, all eight and six. So we're going to discuss who's going to make the stinking playoffs. All right, three games left. Who's going to make the playoffs? Donald, I know I went on a little rant there, about two minutes Left you sitting there just kind of nodding your head. And I, I, I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to give you the floor right now. Man, you had the Steelers winning this game. What did the Indianapolis Colts show you Show you uh, when they, when, when they uh, accomplished what they did? Um, so I was at the game, right? And so it was just interesting to kind of see it. Um, I, it was very interesting to see because I wanted to see the way that both teams came out and played. And I thought that both teams in the beginning came out and was very competitive. And then I don't know if it was the, the, the late hit uh, that, that kind of took the, the wind out of the Steelers, which was weird, but they came out in that second half and they were not the same football team. Like it was just the one thing that I do recall was like, the energy on that sideline was just, they were just there. They weren't like in it. There was no one just, they it just didn't, they just didn't have, they just didn't come out to play second half. And the Colts came out to play. They had all the energy. They were running around, jumping around, hooping and hollering. And the Steelers were just like, they were just like, Hey, I'm ready to go to Cabo. I'm ready to go to Cancun. I'm ready to go to, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're just like, let's get out of this playoff picture. I'm not making this run. Like, and it was just evident. It was obvious. That was my main takeaway is like they just didn't – they didn't come out to play the second half. They were a team that they thought they kind of had in the bag or that the Colts were going to, you know, do something to just give the game away, and they didn't do that. Um, so, you know, like it's very, very interesting to see how tight this race is for not just the division but for these playoff spots because, you know, you see, you see Jacksonville kind of going in the opposite direction right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know they have they have some issues, and, and quite frankly, like the main like blaring one is their quarterback issue. Like you know, and I hate to see injuries. He can't help out what happened to him, but he's just not the same uh, player that he was before he got injured. And so like they've been on this 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 skid, this losing skid, and it's the perfect time for the Colts. But the bad part is the Texans are deciding to come out to show up and, and, and win every game when the Colts are winning too. So this is going to make things very interesting these last you know few games of the season. And it's crazy how, like, they're going to have this showdown at the end. It might be to determine if Jacksonville gets their, you know, their their, their stuff together. It might be, you know, to get into the playoffs for a wild card spot. So, um, you know, another interesting one is just going to be watching this AFC uh, East between, you know, Buffalo and, and, and the Dolphins. And I know, you know, their records don't reflect it, but I was telling you earlier, like, you don't want to play Buffalo right now. Like you don't want to play. They're 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 playing well. They got chips on their shoulders. All of them do. Yeah. So 
what's funny is what we were talking about the uh in the playoff picture you literally right now you have five teams sitting in the AFC at 8 and 6 Jaguars the Bengals the Colts the Texans and the Bills five teams now most likely it's most likely Dolphins are going to take their division right they're 10 and 4 all right uh, they still got a two-game lead on the Buffalo. Is it possible Buffalo could come back and, and take it? It's possible. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I think it, it is possible. Chiefs sit at 9-5. and five. No one's going to take them over. But the Jaguars, you know, they're 8-6. and six. Like I said, the Browns are 9-5. and five. Of course, the Ravens right now still sitting number one, sitting pretty at 11-3. and three. Uh, yeah. So... Odds are they got their division locked up as well, right? Um, so really, it's a it's a jumbled mess. We was talking about the AFC right now, and before I go any further, I got to remind everybody: Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports from football, boxing, golf, NFL, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember, use promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Now, so looking ahead, as it sits right now, the Indianapolis Colts sitting at the seventh seed, Bengals sitting at the sixth seed, Browns sitting at the fifth seed. All right. There's some tiebreakers there. As we all know, the Browns and the Bengals both beat the Indianapolis Colts. There's a lot of controversy on that Browns game, but on paper, the Browns beat the Colts, right? The Colts mm-hmm. uh, so far has a one game edge on the Texans, which is why the Colts are over the Texans right now. And then, of course, the Bills sitting at eight and six as well. And then the Colt, the reason the Steelers are sitting at 10 at seven and seven is because, well, we all watched that game on Saturday. Uh, but still a very tight race. There's still other teams that could get in there. I mean, you still got the seven and seven Broncos, right? Uh, that could very well make a push in there as well. So, in your opinion, do the Ravens walk away with the first seed in this? They would have to really do something drastic to not walk away with this number one seed. Um, just being see, being where they are, how they're playing, the remainder of their schedule. It's not easy, though. Like, they got a tough schedule the last, like, few weeks of here. Um, you know, so, I mean, yes, uh, it is possible to see it, to see maybe, which would be crazy, um, to Four see, like, the Dolphins – uh, yeah, like, and to see the Dolphins slide into, like, the number one spot, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Or, like, or something crazy to happen and the Chiefs slide into number one spot if they run the table. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, like, and, 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 and Baltimore, what works is to come to two losses, right? And then Kansas City wins all three of their games. Like, it, it's, possible. I, it's possible, right? I mean, anything's possible. And I think that uh, when you're looking at this playoff picture – like it's 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 not one that you can just kind of say like, yeah, like for right now they're ahead. Like yeah, right now Baltimore is ahead. But like when you really look at Baltimore's schedule, like they got their they they. I was looking at looking at yeah man they they really have their hands full the rest of the season. And I mean look at it they got 49ers, Dolphins, and then the Steelers. So they can potentially go they could go one and two. Yeah. Instead of two and one, you right, you know what I'm saying? Or I don't see them going three and oh, you know what I'm saying? Like that 49ers game is possibly, uh, if you wanted to really call it, that's probably the Super Bowl preview. But I mean, you go look at the Dolphins schedule, it's equally as nasty. I mean, they've got the Cowboys, then the Where Ravens, and Where? The Bills. Where? Where are the Cowboys at? They well, I mean, they're still a winning Home team. Up. They they did lose the Buffalo, but I mean, you still look at their, you know, where are they? Where, where, <laughs> where are they? Where are the Dolphins playing the Cowboys at? Yeah, uh, I don't really think. I don't know if it matters much because Cowboys are a hot weather team as well, right? 
Cowboys can't win on the road. And we've seen that. And let's see. And they're playing in Miami, buddy. But it's, you know, it's Miami. What does that mean? It's going to be a warm weather t- game. It's not. No, I'm not worried about the weather. I'm just worried about them not being able to play on the road. On the road. Okay. Yeah, like they've, they've shown their struggles on the road. Like, so even when you, like, well, I don't want to switch gears yet, but look at the NFC uh, picture. It, I find that to be way more intriguing than anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. But like I said, they then they travel to the Ravens, and then they host the Bills. I mean, they got a tough schedule too, right? Ravens oh, game, yeah. no gimme. That's a tight fight game. And Bills Dolphins is just a battle right now. It always is division, right? So, ugh, I don't know. In my opinion, right now, now that I look at the schedule, I'm like. Ravens or Dolphins, it could be either one because of the schedules that they're facing right now. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it just it depends upon who who wins two and who loses two. You know, that's that's what happens at that point. Yeah. And the big matchup is when they face each other, right? Whoever wins that probably takes the first seed. Correct. It'll be interesting to see though. I mean, I'm like this is I mean, if you don't like Playoff like con- like contention mm-hmm. football, and if you don't like to see like a playoff picture shape shape up right before your eyes, like every week is just crucial for not just what we said the Colts to win every game. Some of these other teams they got to win every game too. Like they got to win out, or they have to like hope for a miracle. What I don't like is like when you, when we go through these scenarios, like the Jaguars are in if the if the if the Kansas City loses and uh, the my, and the Dolphins win and. And the Browns, I'm like, oh, God, just – are they in or not? Like, I don't care about all that. Like, <laughs> perfect, perfect storm for these teams to get in. But it's it's going to shape up like that it's in some cases, man. Like, you know, like, what will be crazy is, like, you can't forget about – and the thing is, like, the teams that really pay attention to are those bottom teams that just get in the playoffs. Excuse me, because I can see, like, you know, like, okay, let's say the Ravens get a bye, right? So now you're looking at – Dolphins playing, if it's still right now, what, the Colts? Yeah. In Miami? Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah, I don't like that idea. I don't either, but I can see the Colts beating the Dolphins. Uh, I can if, if Tyree Kill's not 100%. I'm a little worried about Tyree Kill. All right. The rest of that the was, Dolphins, I'm not all that worried about. That right. was the weirdest thing he ever, that, that he pulled like last. That What, what was that? I'm still trying to figure that out myself. Like, I don't know. Either I don't want to get off topic. But that was weird. Um, so nonetheless, so you know, like this playoff picture can really be one that can that, you know, I don't know, man. It, it's it's very, very, very it, it's not gonna it's not gonna settle itself till the see till the after the, you know, the last week of the season. What are the odds that a a backup quarterback ends up in the Super Bowl this year? Well, let's mm, AFC wise. Yeah. I don't see a backup quarterback being a Super Bowl AFC wise. I see the Bengals have a possibility. I don't, the Bengals are not going to the Super Bowl. I know, but, and then you got the Browns. They're a possibility. Oh, well, I mean, then, then you got to say, then the Colts. Then the Colts is a well, possibility. You, you, yeah. Okay. Is Stroud still hurt. That's who? Stroud. I don't. I mean, I don't. He may or may not. I don't know. I mean, he's not going to be out for too much longer. Put no, it like that. no. He he he'll probably be back by the Super Bowl. But I mean, what's wrong with him? I uh, can't remember exactly. I know he was out. I think it was a concussion. I'm not for sure. I can look up it real quick. I don't. I don't want to do all that. Uh, yep. Yeah, concussion. No, he'll be back by next week. So anyway, so that's not neither here nor there. Yeah, I mean, I just don't see. I mean, if we're going through every backup quarterback that's starting that with the te- with the team that has some super playoff life, then you have to, you know, you have to say, hey, then in that case, Steelers, right? I mean, like you got to go through all of them. I'm not. I'm just being realistic. Think, like, I'd be surprised if the Steelers win another game this year. Listen, after watching them in in person on Saturday, the way they 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 checked out. Mm-hmm. 
They checked. And Mike out. Tomlin in his press conference afterwards was like, I have no answers. I have no answers. And that actually came out of his mouth. I don't have any answers for you. All I can tell you is we're going to do things differently from here on out. You know, <laughs> and I'm just like, that sounds like somebody who thinks his job might be on the line. You know, rightfully so. I mean, you haven't won nothing in a while, and you've been seeing everyone on their heads on a chopping block for the longest. And now, all of a sudden, I mean, shoot, since Ben left, even his Ben's last year was a joke. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, like, you, you, you're not safe, buddy. Nobody's safe. Nobody's job is safe. Like, unless you got some some dirty pictures of somebody, you better be, you know, worry about your job. So the Colts last. Five games the Colts have are five teams that are actually in playoff contention, right? You had the Bengals and the Steelers, right? Which the Colts knocked the Steelers out. Bengals beat the Colts. Mm-hmm. Next week we play the Falcons. They're in they're in playoff contention, I think. Yeah. Uh, Raiders still have life in the playoffs. They're not in the playoffs. They have to have a lot of help to get in the playoffs, but they still have life mm-hmm. to get in there. And then, of course, the Texans. So, uh, the Colts, the last five games this year have been, you know, they've been pretty, pretty decent schedule that they've had to face. Um, and I don't know, man. Uh, this week, like the next three games, like I talked about the Falcons, the Raiders, the Texans. Uh, I, I, look, I think the Colts could beat all three of these teams. Do I they think can. they do? No. I, I, I think they go two and one. I'm just hoping that one of those two is the Texans because they have to do that to get in the playoffs. Correct. I mean, they can't, they, they cannot lose to Houston period. No. no. So that leaves who they're going to lose to Raiders or who's, who's the last team they're playing. The Falcons, um, the Falcons are the only team I feel like they have a, uh, that, that they could lose to and it would not hurt their playoff contention as bad because the Raiders is still a conference team. And with all these teams that are tied, it comes down to conference record, right? I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you what, out of all those teams, Raiders are the most dangerous team to play though. Yeah. Like just because of the simple fact that like, it's coming down to the wire. They like their coach. The players like their coach. They're going to fight for their coach. I think they have a really good defensive line. You know, you can pick out so many different storylines oh, to, yeah. to to make them a team that's going to like. You know what I'm saying? Like if they if, if if their interim coach right now tells them like, hey, like our main focus is to ruin anyone else that has a playoff chance. Like let's ruin that that, that chance for them. Like those guys are going to go out there and just really try to like put on a performance and, and like play well. And like, they might want him to be the next coach for them. And so if they can get him to nine wins, that's a win. They're over 500, right? Like they're like, like he's proven that he can pick up the pieces. They're a tough team to play, man. Like they're a dangerous team. play. they're not like, I, I wouldn't say tough, but if they can get going, especially on that defensive side of the ball. Like they can keep their, like their, their team in the game, like big time. Well, I mean, the, like, if you look at the Falcons, we don't even know who's going to be the starting quarterback. Is that's what I'm not even talking about. Is it yeah, be Heineke? We don't know. You know? Yeah. We have no yeah. – how difficult is that? I wonder how <laughs> – it, it's different for a defensive team, I, I assume, for, for the defense to practice and, and prepare for an offense when you don't know what the quarterback is, right? I mean, it's got to be – it's got to be more difficult. Right, because you don't know because Heineke is not the same type of quarterback that Desmond Ritter is. Heineke is that guy that can, you know, he likes to get out the pocket and gunsling and things of that nature. And Ritter's more of that pocket pack, kind of a game manager type, you know, quarterback. So uh I mean that's that that's that's a lot on Gus Bradley, in my opinion, not knowing who he's gonna be facing uh this upcoming week. Yeah, that that adds a whole other element to to the game. It's like you got to find that out. You got to be checking these uh, scouting reports and these injury reports because you need to know who 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 you got how you got to have the game plan this this thing because you know you might have one whole scheme for a pocket passer that you're not going to think and get outside the pocket and run, 
And then before you know it, he ain't in the game. You got someone else starting the game off, and now you got your whole defense is out leveraged from the from the jump because you're not in the right defensive kind of package. And so it's, that's going to be difficult for him. You know, like you kind of almost have to install two kind of packages mm-hmm. with the, hey, this is why we're coming out. If so-and-so is a the quarterback, then we got to switch to this. But if not, then we're going to play it. Like, it's a lot, man. And it, it, it kind of causes you to not be able to – go into a game fully confident of what you're going to do to get the job done. And that's the worst feeling ever. Like, especially as a player, like when you feel like you're not prepared, like you're underprepared for, you know, like the task at hand, that's just like a tall order to fill. And it's very unsettling and very unnerving when you, when you, when you get out there, cause you're not, it's like, it's like going to a test that, you know, you know, you didn't prepare hard enough for it. You know, you don't know, but 70%, 70% of the, the test, like the material, it's no different, but if you you can do as much as you can, the only thing I can say is those guys are going to have to watch film on both quarterbacks and watch how they play it because there's no other way. You don't know who's going to be out there. I got a question, offensive line question. It, uh, got, got, it's what you just talked about got me wondering. When you uh, were playing, do offensive line, uh, do you guys just – watch film of the starters or do you look at the depth guys too and study those as well on the team that you're getting ready to face yeah so you have to watch everybody because you're going to get a sprinkle you're going to get a, a sprinkle of everybody at some point and especially you have to watch you just have to watch because some teams are just they got guys are just coming for on third down at pass rush mm-hmm. right so you gotta watch his reps you gotta so what i would do is i would watch a full game i'll watch a full game you know, for, from beginning of the first, the first, you know, defensive play to the last defensive play for the defense we're playing, and I will just go over. I will look at tendencies. Like every time I watch it, I will watch it more and more. But I only watch it from the tight copy unless I knew like there was a blitz coming or whatever, and then I could watch it. You know, I say I watch the wide so I could see like the safety rotation or what have you. And then uh, you just have to pay attention to like who's in, when are they in, why are they in, what's the down distance, right? Like, are they blitzing on this? So you know, like, all right, when this guy comes in, if he comes in early on second down, expect blitz because they like to run a lot of line stunts with him and get him moving as opposed to the big 335-pound guy who can't move and he's kind of just out there. He serves no purpose of them running this twist game. So you just have to understand and know every single person who you're going to be up against because if you don't, then you're underprepared. Like, I can't study for – that's like knowing 70% of the test. Yeah, he's the starter. He's the guy who's out there. Everyone knows his name. But when he goes like this, I got to know who's coming in for him. Mm-hmm. You know, so like that's what that's when the good players really, you know, take it, take advantage of making sure that they stay great or stay good because they're prepared for whoever's out there. It doesn't matter if that starter never even plays. I know the backup because I watched enough film on the backup as well to be able to you know ace this exam because I prepared. So Something I did notice defensively, I was watching the the All-22 today, this morning, um, when we had to delay our recording, and I I was noticing... That was a shot. That was a shot. No, that wasn't a shot. That was an opportunity for me (laughs) to look at film. I love watching film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, here's the thing. Gus Bradley didn't blitz that much. Fine. But what I did see was a change. Mm Mm-hmm. He ran a twist or a stunt on almost every defensive snap. It was re- and it was different kinds. I mean, yeah. I was seeing three tech going to the seven, right, and seven flipping out to the three. I- I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff, just like completely bypassing linemen. You know, I ain't never. I I, I normally don't see a defensive tackle taken all the way to the outside edge right yeah so that's so so they so first off you can't put any um anything into that for the upcoming weeks yeah that is strictly like this offensive line can't handle movement well they don't pass twist games off properly we can have we can we can if we continue to make them move we will find holes and get to the quarterback and it works yeah so that that stunt you're talking about is called the pirate o stunt so like that backside three technique is going to loop around and the nose 
and the defensive end on the other side are going to stun across. So that, mm-hmm. that nose is going to stun across the center's face all the way to the backside guard. That end's going to stunt all the way down into the A gap. And then that backside three technique is going to loop all the way around those two mm-hmm. to that outside C gap on the other side. It's called a pirate O stunt. And so it's t- trying to get, you know, that center to, to chase down and hoping that the guard, the the, the, the opposite guard who the, the, the nose is crossing face of the center is trying to pick his hip and he get the sack. If that doesn't happen, well, the center's chased him down. So now I can get the end across the guard, the front side guard's face, and try to chip that 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 nose. I mean, the the center who's chasing the nose around, n- nose down, and he should be chasing him. He should be passing him off. So there's a hole there. And while all this is going on, the end, the 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 end is. I mean, the the three technique that wraps around. Mm-hmm. He's trying to get around all of that and find another hole and insert himself, maybe between the guard and the tackle. Depending on what the tackle does, if he shoots too far down, but then it helps if that quarterback were to loop out because he sees these two guys stunting across the face and they're getting penetration. Well, here he goes saying he can loop out. Well, oh nope, here comes the three technique over the top to get you on that bet on that front side where you thought you were free from the D lineman. So it's a cool stunt. You have to be prepared for it. So apparently, like what Gus saw from the from Pittsburgh was they don't move well in space. They don't pass twists off. So what we're going to do? We're going to move every single time. We're going to stunt every single time. So you know, one of those things. But that's the that's the game plan stuff that Gus can do. Mm-hmm. Now he can't get he can't get real creative on this right this week because then there's a little lack like lack of the unknown. Like there's 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 some unknown to who's going to be behind the center and who's going to be in the backfield. And it's like, all right, well, how do we play this thing? Do we just stick to our laurels and, and rush the four that we've been rushing all year, and hopefully that just takes care of itself? Or do I have to add a little, you know, a little hot sauce into this thing and, and spice it up a little bit? What do we do, right? And so it'll be interesting to see what he comes up with here because, um, yeah, going into a game not knowing who your quarterback's going to be that you're going to be going to you're up against is like, man, you don't know what they're going to do. You don't know if they're going to run the ball. You don't know if they're going to pass the ball. You don't know what – you just don't know, you know? Well, here's here's another – I'm assuming offense and defense are very similar in these situations that sometimes – Sometimes there will be play calls that you just did not practice for a long time. Like you didn't practice it or or play it since the beginning of the year, at the end of the year. And then the coach is like, all right, we're doing this play right here, right now. Does that happen a lot? And when it does, is there like, is is, is that a shit your pants moment? (laughs) No, it's just like, like, like I said a few weeks ago, it's like the annexation of Puerto Rico. Like when you run something like that. Right. So, you know, you put it in during training camp, um, and it doesn't. It just never gets called, mm-hmm. and for no rhyme or reason, it's just a play that never gets called um, until now, right? And so, it's one of those deals where you'll be you'll, you'll be in you'll be uh, you'll you'll get the game plan, and then coaches will go over. Hey, we're gonna run. We're running this play that we that, that we ran. You know, earlier in training camp, we're gonna bring it back out, and you know. Honestly, got to a lot of it for up front for us is no different from a certain play. You just got to remember how to run a certain play. Like it might be, I don't know, it might be some type of special screen player. It might be some type of, you know, uh, action off of power. And you just have to understand what is all going on in the backfield that might make the linebackers flow differently or the D line to do something different. Or, you know, you're blocking one way, but reversing out. So you got to, you know, do something, you know, tricky. Like you got to whip around the defender and pin them on the backside because the ball's coming back the other way. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, hey, once you're able to play football and you understand the game, uh, there's not too much that there's just all just little variances off of the main core plays. But it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, like, there's probably going to be like some type of fake punt that that, that they put in during training camp that it never – imaginable like you would run this thing and then now it's up this week like just be ready like if we call it and you know a lot of stuff happens like every week like there's like there's there's a play there's a there's a call that's that's up this week we might not call it and they just never call it yeah Yeah. right so So, like that happens a lot so do do does it ever happen where a a player's like I, i can't remember my 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 job on this um no because like ask another guy or something very, no, this is you know how like in movies they're like, hey, like it'll be in a huddle, like, hey, you remember how to run this? Uh, yeah. And like, no, like, well, like 
you know, out of all the years that I've been in the league and in, in the, you know, in the in the huddle, I've never been in the huddle where we just called a play that we haven't ran in like two months. Like, I just don't think there's there's not enough trust or there's not enough, excuse me, not not even trust. It's more so like I ain't calling this thing because I want to make sure that we have it covered because I don't know if they know how to run it against this type of defense. You know what I'm saying? So like there's never been a time where like something was up and it just stayed up, and but we never practiced it ever again until like the like last week of the season, or we didn't even practice, we just called it in the game. That is, I, I've never seen that happen before to where you know you just call something and somebody's like, I don't even know what to do on this play. Now, there are plays, regular plays, where uh, you call something and the guy will be like, What I got on this? you be like, Bro, like as we're going to the line of scrimmage, you'd be like, Hey, you got the you got blah blah blah, you know what I'm saying? Like. So like there's stuff like that, like right, and you all, and this is this is the telltale sign when I know something bad's about to happen. When there's too much talking on the offensive line, when you start seeing that helmet stripe going back and forth like this to each other, somebody doesn't know what to do. Yeah. Or when you see them constantly talking, talking, looking at each other like this as they're getting down, somebody doesn't know what to do. So um, you just gotta know your assignments, man. And as you get closer to the playoffs, there's zero room for it. Like there's like there's not there's there's one thing to say there's no room and there's zero room. And I think when you say there's no room, there's a little room, right? Like I got no room for 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 somebody in this like to come in this to, to come in this room. I got no I got but if I got zero room for it, like I'm telling you, like I don't have a, a inch of nothing. Like you can't give up. So like we used to play off like if you don't know your assignment, you lose, you go home. Because it's just that critical for you to know everything, know your opponent, know your backup, know what the play calls are going to be, know your assignments, know tendencies, all that kind of stuff, because there's no room for it. There's none. Like, there is zero room for error in this upcoming, like, weeks leading up to it. Like, we can turn the ball over and maybe win a football game. You turn the ball over in the playoffs, it's, it's usually a curtain call. And that, that's – that's a big thing because, like, against the Steelers, muted myself. Uh, <laughs> I heard you loud and clear. Yeah. Um, so, you look at the uh, the stat line for Gardner Minshew, and you don't think that's a, a great, you know, oh, wow, eye-popping, right? Uh, it was like 18 of – hold on. Let me, let me look at that real quick. 18 of 28, 215, right? But when you when you add three touchdowns and no turnovers, that's his best passer rating he had all year. Right. All year long. And it's amazing what scoring and not turning the football over can do on a stat sheet, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that on, on that situation. Gardner Minshew has not really been turning the football over ever since what week six? He's not real, maybe won a game, won every other game, which to me is a good line to have as a quarterback. One turnover every other game is not a back backbreaker. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't feel that. Now, is that going to extend the rest of the season? We have yet to find out, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I mean, here's the deal. You just you can't turn the ball over and expect mm -hmm. to win. So, like, yeah, that stat's fine, like fine and dandy when it comes to mediocre football. But like if we want to win Super Bowl, a Super Bowl, or if you want to win your division, or if you want to win in the playoffs, or if you want to win a playoff game, let alone make a run, you can't turn the ball over. Like and you got to be efficient. You got to be you've got to be a leader. You've got to put the, the weight of the team on your back. You've got to make sure the guys everyone holds themselves accountable. You hold yourself accountable. And this is just zero, there's zero room for anything else. Like, there's no room for anything else. And so, like, I question going into this playoff picture and just not even getting into playoffs, but just making this playoff run of the leadership and ex playoff experiences on this Colts roster. Right? Like, because, like, that matters too. Like, mm -hmm. when you look at these teams come down the stretch, like, the teams that have the more seasoned veteran guys that have been in those these positions before and coaching staff that has been in these positions before, um, the better off you'll be as a team trying to make this run. 
You know, you like that might be one of the reasons why Steichen, you know, not just because he's a good backup, but because of why he grabbed Gardner Minshew because he was there for that Super Bowl run last year with him. Yeah, hundred percent. Like all those, all these little storylines play a part into the decisions they get made, and when they, when he, like he stands up, and he's like, "No, I want Gardner here because I know he can do this. Like I know he's quality. I know that he knows what it takes. He's been around it." Even you know, what I'm saying he knows like the laser like focus we need, all that kind of stuff matters, right? Because not if even if we have a we draft a high, we draft a quarterback here, at least he can mentor him. And if we have a chance to make a playoff run, he could be the one in the room, right? Making sure that he stays focused and keeping him calm because he's been he's seen this before, right? Like he's seen it. Like a lot of guys, man, will go and have a 10, 11, 12 year career if you play that long and never make the playoffs. And I didn't realize that till I got to um, Miami in, in 2008, and we made the playoffs my freshman, my freshman, my, my rookie year, and we were one in 15 the year prior to making the playoffs. And our coach Co- Tony Sperano stood up in the team meeting room, and he's like, "Guys, I just want you to understand that like you making the playoffs special. Don't take this for granted. Like to make the playoffs, like it, it doesn't come easy." And he looked up. He's like, Vonnie, Ho- Vonnie Holiday was like one of the older veterans. He's like, Vonnie, how many years have you played in the league? I think Vonnie was like in his 12th year or something, 11th or 12th year. He's like, how many times you made the playoffs? He was like, never. This is my first time. I was like, what? Like, you've been in the league that long. You never made the playoffs? But think about it. Like, guys that get stuck on these bad teams get stuck in, in, in Detroit back in the, like a few years ago. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just a few years ago. Get, st- I was saying, get stuck in Cleveland. Get stuck in New York. Like, you can play five or six years straight without making the playoffs if you stay on one team, and then you go to another team, and they might not make the playoffs. There's no – so, like, it's special. So, when you get – like, when we understood the severity of that and how we went and we got, we got you know, lost in the wild card game. But nonetheless, like, you saw how special it was and how you couldn't, you couldn't take it for granted, yada, yada, yada. So – you know, I just hope that there that that's there for the Colts because that'll be big too. It's like, yeah, you guys, okay, regular season's great. The playoffs are a whole different monster. I just tell people all the time, like, like I got out on the field and like the lights were brighter. Like I, I'm telling, I'm swear to goodness, I'm, like the lights were brighter. Like, like everything was just so much more crisp. Like it was just different. Like it was like it was like the stadium was like quieter but louder. If I can explain it, it was just weird. Like, and then forget it, the Super Bowl was just the weirdest experience ever. Um, you know, that was just different. That didn't even feel like a football game. That felt like we were playing like in a in a showcase of some sort. Like it was weird. But to to say the least, like it you, it just seemed like and so like what I'm saying is like every play is so crucial. It's like under a magnifying glass, like so like. If you miss a block, like it, it could it could potentially lead to you losing the whole the whole deal because you missed your you missed your assignment, or if you fumble the football, that might be that turning the, the play to like change the whole dynamic of the football game. Like so, like these little mishaps or these bad mistakes or habits that we're making during the year of ball security, of missing blocks, of 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 of, of not wrapping up right. Of, all these things they cannot happen in the playoffs, and they've got to get cleaned up in these last three games. There's no room to not have them cleaned up. Like guys can't miss on their tackles, guys can't miss on their blocks. Like guys, you you can't throw and throw picks. You can't turn the ball over. You can't. You, if you feel yourself getting hit, you got to secure the football. We can't have strip sack fumbles. Like all those all those things like that have happened during the season cannot happen because. You don't have another week to right those wrongs. You don't have another chance to come in the day after the game or two days after the game and watch the film and get coached up. Like it's over. And nine times out of ten, like the room that you're in with those eight or nine guys on the offensive line or three guys, excuse me, playing, you know, at quarterback will not be the same ever again in your life. Hell, the coach might be gone. So he can't even coach you up on the pointers. Right. So like there's no what this, you know, you what woulda, coulda, shoulda, woulda, all that kind of stuff. Like, you can't get that back, and you may never make the playoffs again. So guys got to understand the severity, how important th- this is. They have a cold type of team that can make a run, but they cut got to cut down on the errors, right? They just that's it. If they cut down the errors. I think they have a shot 
Because you're going to have to bump up against a really good football team to advance where you can't make those mistakes. You can get away with them with the Steelers. You can get away with them with, with, with the other teams that we played. You can't get away with them with certain teams, and that's why they're at the top of the food chain, and you're kind of in the middle of the, of the, of the pecking order. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll kind of get a look, a better look at what our injury report is for this upcoming week on Friday. Uh, know where Michael Pittman's sitting in the uh, concussion protocol. No, no more about Zach Moss, uh, where he's sitting with his arm injury and stuff of that nature. We'll get into that a little bit more. But this was this was uh, us kind of just going over the fact that the playoffs are right around the corner, and this is no bigger time of year for the Indianapolis Colts to be in that playoff mindset because there are. Half the rest of the AFC, it seems like, is also in that mindset, right? They're all bidding not just to make the playoffs, but for seeding as well. So this is a great episode. Appreciate you for uh, hanging out and, and, and giving us your insight, Donald. And I think that's going to do it for myself and Donald on Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And as usual, go Colts. Go Colts, baby. Do you believe? 